Ramona Grasso, a sustainability driving business developer and circular economy lecturer, holds a dual degree in economics, management, and policies for global challenges, specializing in green economy and sustainability, with honors from the University of Fejada and Southern Denmark University. Throughout his career, he has actively promoted circular economy principles by leading the development of the green tech startup Circo in Italy for two and a half years. He now focuses on educating young students and professionals to drive progress and innovation in sustainability. The speech of today will be basically about uh, the status of circular economy in, uh, in Europe, uh, what are the challenges, what are the opportunities, according to some uh, recent reports that have been released by different uh, in institutions. In these slides, you can also see some uh, contact details. Uh, so if you want to discuss uh, the, these reports further, I'm very glad uh, to do it. Um, so what is the, um, the story of today? Uh, basically, the circular economy is becoming a mega trend all over the world, and especially Europe is in the front line for uh, uh, circular economy, especially through policies and innovation. And we will see some data uh, in, uh, in Italy uh, specifically. Uh, there are many problems uh, that the circular economy wants to address, and one of them is the um, heavy reliance on virgin materials that we still have in, uh, globally. Uh, and even though Europe is registering one of the highest the circularity rate, uh, the European economy is still pretty linear. There is also a huge misconce misconception, which is that mm, circular economy is mainly uh, waste management, but we will see uh, that it's not. Actually, I think in this audience, uh, we mostly know that it's not just waste management, but I'm uh, very happy to show you also some other um, aspect of uh, the circular economy. And in the end, I will show you some information about a new report uh, released by the European Environmental Agency uh, called uh, Accelerating the Circular Economy in Europe to understand how circular economy can help us achieve uh, the climate targets and specifically how to uh, achieve the sustainable development goal 13. So as I said, uh, the circular economy is uh, becoming a mega trend. This was a um, recent statement uh, um, released in the Circularity Gap Report 2024 uh, by the circular economy. And specifically, they saw that in the last five years, the volume of discussion and you know, articles and scientific publication increased a lot and specifically has almost tripled over these uh, last uh, five years. On the other side, though, um, we can see that global circularity is uh, still in decline. Uh, it dropped in, uh, in the last years. The consumption is, uh, is increasing. And there are many reasons why this is happening, mainly the increase in, uh, in population that requires always more um, uh, resources. And we are taking these resources from virgin material and not from uh, secondary raw materials. So we need to walk the talk, we need to put into practice uh, the circular economy that is uh, growing as a topic. We have more uh, solution uh, being developed, but we need to put it really into practice. And we need to do it everywhere in, uh, in the world, and that's one of the reasons why I'm very glad that we're having this uh, connection between Europe and Australia. Uh, I really believe that circular economy comes with uh, the um, slogan, think globally, act locally, uh, because you can learn, you can get knowledge, network, innovation from uh, other places in the world and uh, implementing it uh, on, a, on a local level. Europe uh, is going into this direction with uh, regulation, research and development, innovation uh, through um, um, corporate startups, and uh, I want to show you some numbers specifically in uh, in Italy about that. Unfortunately, the graphic in um, in this slide is in Italian, but I'm pretty sure you will uh, see what is written through like my explanation. On the first uh, side, on the left side, you can see that uh, there was been there has been uh, an increase of patents registered in Germany, France, Italy, and Spain between 2019 and 2021. And specifically, there was an, an increase by 103% of, uh, of patents. Uh, these were mainly uh, registered by private, small and medium enterprises, uh, and the main sectors were chemicals, uh, manufacturing, and waste uh, management. 
Uh, specifically, Germany uh, is, um, has been the first country to register more, more patents and uh, has been followed by Italy. Uh, all this information are included into the Circular Economy Report 2023 provided by the Energy and Strategy and Research Center of the Polytechnic of Milan. Uh, in the main part of the graphic, instead, you can see some data about startups and specifically startups in Italy. Uh, they mapped over 210 startups and uh, they are mainly focusing on different type of, um, of solution. Um, for example, eco design and uh, upstream uh, uh, solution, uh, uh, such as also repair uh, solution, but also some startups are still focusing on a huge problem that we need to address, that is um, how to treat uh, some specific waste streams uh, through, uh, still through recycling. Um, out of them, uh, they, they saw um, that 99 of them uh, released information about their financing and specifically they raised uh, over 122.7 million euros uh, in the sector in the circular economy sector, which is still small though, compared to the 2.4 uh, billion uh, of um, euros raised by all the startups uh, in, uh, in Italy. Uh, this is very important because uh, the, one of the main problems that we are facing globally is the decrease uh, um, of uh, the circularity uh, the global circularity rate. Uh, the circular, um, circular economy through this uh, yearly report shows that in 2018, uh, the circularity rate was 9.1% and it dropped till 7.2% in 2023 and confirmed that in 2024. Uh, so we are using always more uh, virgin material to, um, to reply to the uh, demands of resources that we have as a growing population. The situation is pretty different in Europe because we in Europe have an higher uh, circularity rate and specifically we have the highest circularity rate, uh, which is about 11.8%. Uh, uh, However, you can see in this graph uh, um, that I took from the uh, recent report from the European Environmental Agency, it was pretty flat uh, during the last uh, the last 10 years. So um, we, we see that it's actually a, a positive, um, a positive figures, but at the same time, it's not growing as it's supposed uh, to, as it is supposed to. Um, the European economy indeed is still pretty linear and we need to really change the, um, the, the economy to be able to reach our climate targets. And uh, in, the, in the report, you can see many examples of how a circular economy is performing better to this purpose compared to a linear economy. And I decided to do this one because I think it's really effective to show uh, the um, the life of, um, of a product um, in a linear economy and in a circular economy. In, indeed, uh, a product usually lasts a certain period of time and uh, in a linear economy it can happen that before the end of life you have breakdowns, premature obsolescence, uh, and then when there is at the end of life you usually either dispose it or recover it. While in a circular economy you can prolong the lifespan of the product and the, of the resources through reuse, repair, remanufacture, and through high-quality high recycling. Another important um, aspect that we have to consider is that uh, the circular economy is not just uh, um, waste management. It goes beyond the concept of, uh, of waste management. And specifically, it is uh, uh, keeping high the value of resources uh, and prolong the resource lifespan, uh, design out all the pollutants, and also including uh, renewable uh, energy. Um, I'm not sure whether in uh, other parts of the world it's like this, but I know that in Italy, uh, there, are, there is a, a huge misconception about the circular economy and the waste management, and often uh, circular economy is just recycling. But we know that it's not just uh, recycling, we know there is much more, there is the eco design. In, the, the, in many in European documents, it's uh, written that up to 80% of products' environmental impact are determined at the design phase. This means that uh, uh, when we design products, processes, and services, we are able to uh, understand what are the impacts uh, that uh, our products or processes will have, and we can address and minimize them through uh, changing the production itself or the materials we choose or many other aspects that can make our products more uh, sustainable. There are many ways to make our products and processes uh, sustainable. Uh, one that I really like and I think it's going to be uh, an important um, 
uh, aspect in um, in um, the industry in the future it's the um, everything as a service specifically the product as a service uh, many companies are starting to sell their product as a service uh, which uh, has a lot of uh, benefit on an environmental side but also on a, a economical financial side uh, specifically when you don't uh, uh, when you remain owner of the product that you sell, you're able to take it back and uh, uh, reuse uh, the components or to disassemble it, uh, remanufacturing, to recycle it uh, uh, better than in the current uh, um, uh, business model, in which you are not uh, owner of the product anymore, but the consumer is. Uh, so, um, and there are also financial uh, aspects that make this uh, this business model uh, sustainable and valid. So the question is, why not producing everything as a service? Um, to support this uh, this question, I decided to put here some uh, graphic uh, that are um, in uh, a recent uh, uh, McKinsey uh, survey. Uh, they specifically asked uh, um, about uh, under, about one thousand CEOs what they think about uh, the new type of business that will be uh, built in uh, in the next uh, five years. And you can see on top uh, the their replies in 2022 and uh, on the bottom the their replies in 2023 and now they change it. So basically at the, the industry level, CEOs thinks that AI is going to be the main type of business that the, the company will build in the next five years. And this is confirmed in uh, 2022 and also in 2023. And also, I think, uh, pretty much expected for all of us because uh, you know how popular is AI. How many companies are, are actually uh, starting um, to uh, include AI in, uh, in their business. But surprisingly, in 2023, the everything as a service uh, takes the second place. And the CEOs really uh, believe that company will always more provide um, everything as a service solution. Uh, so for me, this is, this is a very um, interesting and stimulating um, um, data that uh, uh, that I think can support the, the development of this um, um, service service business model. Uh, Europe specifically is uh, sustaining, is promoting the this type of uh, business model, uh, especially through digitalization. So you can also find a funding for digitalization that will support this. Uh, so what's the point of um, developing a circular economy or, or, or a service-based uh, solution or uh, um, of everything that we are saying? Basically, developing the circular economy is a crucial part of addressing the tribal planetary crisis of climate change, biodiversity loss, and pollution. And the transformation of our economy towards circular principles can contribute to alleviate pressure on the environment and manage trade-offs. This is a sentence provided by the European Environmental Agency in the recent uh, report and basically says that shifting to a circular economy can alleviate our pressure on the environment at the same time boosting the economic growth. And I think that this is uh, one of the main aspects of the circular economy, have both sides, less impact on the environment and economic, uh, uh, economic growth. Uh, just to bring you an example, um, in, the, in the report, you can see that uh, um, they found out a modest decoupling uh, from uh, economic growth in uh, waste uh, generation. So you can see that total waste generation actually decreased while the gross domestic product increased. And um, this is a promising figure, even though the likelihood uh, that uh, Europe will uh, um, achieve its uh, recycling target by 2000 by 2030 is um, is low. Um, this is mainly because recycling increased a lot in the last years, but uh, stagnated for a while. And we need to find solution for high quality uh, recycling. Another important, another interesting aspect of the report, uh, in my opinion, is also the increase in adoption of national uh, circular economy strategies. The EU leadership is. Uh, promoting and bringing ahead a lot of policies for the circular economies and the countries are receiving this and implementing it through uh, circular economy and national strategies. So in the graph, you can see um, which countries implemented uh, one of these uh, in uh, which year, and we expect to be able to see the result of this in the, in the, coming, uh, in the coming years. Um, 
how to measure that through the circular use, um, circular material use rate, the circularity rate that we, we said before. And um, specifically, the ambition is to double the current uh, uh, circularity rate in, uh, in Europe, which, as I told you before, it's about um, uh, 11 percent. So how to get to 22 percent? Uh, well, this is for sure a challenging goal, uh, but the, um, the report shows uh, some of the strategies that Europe can, um, can use, such as increasing the recycling rate of all the materials from 40 to 70 percent, decreasing by 15 percent the input of materials to be introduced in the production cycle, cutting fossil fuel consumption by uh, a third. And the report itself says each of these actions represents itself a highly challenging uh, goal. Uh, so um, uh, it's not going to be uh, easy. Um, it's uh, probably um, uh, Europe probably uh, will not uh, achieve the the target uh, that has for two thousand for the twenty thirty. Actually, in the report, it's written that the likelihood to achieve it is uh, low or moderate. But there are positive trends, and uh, um, we really need to walk the talk to put in, into practice all these uh, policies uh, through uh, national uh, strategies. We need to redesign our. Uh, processes and uh, products. Uh, we need to change uh, consumption partners and educate for uh, circular consumption. And we may have to make sure there will be a just uh, transition. So uh, I really believe that circular economy can um, can be uh, can play a pivotal role in uh, uh, achieving the sustainable development goal 13. So let's go circular. Yeah.